by the time you leave here today, what I want you guys to be able to do is calculate the force of gravity between some mass and the Earth, or, or any object, between any two objects at any distance. Because so far what we've got right now is we've got this notion that for every kilogram of mass we have, okay, that there's 9.81 newtons of force. In fact, we would say that the gravitational field strength here is 9.81 newtons for every kilogram, right? But that's actually just an approximation. It's actually a little bit more down here and a little bit less up here. And in fact, that the, that's really small, a very, really small difference. But if you took a pendulum and you swung it, you know, 100 times or something like that here in Tualatin, and then you would do the same experiment up at Timberline Lodge, okay, you actually would get a measurable difference in the acceleration of gravity, okay? It's actually measurably different up at Timberline Lodge. And some physics teachers do that as a field trip. I prefer to go to Oaks Park and ride sickening rides. Okay? <laughs> but but uh, you know, there it is, right? That's the notion. By the end of today, you'll be able to figure out the force between this mass and the Earth, even if this mass is like halfway to the moon, right? And you'll, in fact, and maybe this isn't that important to you, you'll be able to find the force of gravity between these two pens. Yeah? Assuming they're, you know, sufficiently far apart that you could treat them as points, okay? So this is our, this is our big formula there, right, is that um, the force of gravity, if you've got these two masses, and if these things are spheres, or if they're point, char if they're point masses, okay, if they're points, or if they're spheres, this is an exact relationship, okay? Here's our radius. This is mass number one. This is mass number two, okay? And then that force is equal to g times mass 1 and mass 2 divided by that distance, that center to center distance, not the surface to surface, but the center to center, that thing squared. Okay? Now, that constant, we had, by the way, Newton had this formula a long time before we knew what that constant was. And then somebody named Henry Cavendish figured out that this constant was 6.67. <laughs> what? Henry, did I say Henry Cavendish? Yeah. So what about that? Um, in Cloud Atlas, the book we just read in English, uh -huh. one of the characters' name is Timothy Cavendish. Timothy, Tim, well, that's, that's Henry's uh, brother. No, I don't know. <laughs> okay, now, if I could have your attention again, I know that's exciting. Shh, but we've got a lot to do and not so much time. So, this is the deal. This is an extremely small number, the force of gravity between a pen and a stapler or something like that, right, as we're going to calculate, even if we grossly exaggerate their mass, okay, is vanishingly small. This is a vanishingly small force. And if you read your textbook, as you probably should, okay, th it actually describes the actual experiment that Henry Cavendish did. And basically to measure G, you have to measure a force between two mass objects, like a pencil and a stapler, right, know their radius and actually measure that force, and these are exceedingly small forces. So he, he devised, and I thought it was a very an ingenious method, okay, for actually doing that, for actually measuring the force of gravity between two masses, like this, okay? How he did it, I won't waste our time here with, you can dig that out of the textbook, okay? For now, we've got this formula, we've got this, and um, let's do our first example, right? We're gonna do a stapler and a marker, right? Stapler. There's a stapler and a marker, okay? They are how far apart? 1.75 meters apart. Okay, this guy has a mass of, that's a heavy stapler, 0.756 kilograms. This marker is amazingly heavy. It's like, whoa, whoa, whoa heavy marker, okay? Okay, and then we're just gonna plug into this formula, try this, right? The force equals 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11th Newton meters squared over kilograms squared, right? So that's our G, right? The first mass is 0.756 kilograms, right? The second mass is 0.341. And it, kids always, sometimes a kid will ask, which order should you put them in? It's always M1, M2. I'm just kidding. Multiplication is communistic, right? So it doesn't matter which order, right? <laughs> you do it in, okay? 
Now before you plug it into your calculator, two things. The first thing is that this constant has crazy units. Almost all constants have crazy units to them. The crazy units are so that when we cancel the units, okay, we end up with what? Newtons, which is what force is in, right? So that's concept zero. Concept one, when you type this into your calculator, please type this thing in. Go 6.67 e minus 11. Do you guys know how to use scientific exponentiation on your calculator? Do not go times 10 raised to the minus 11. No, go 6.67 e minus 11, okay? The way you do that is this. Yeah, it's actually an EE, and you only get one E out of it, which is kind of a rip. Okay? But here's how you do it. Okay? You go 6.67 second EE, and then it has to be a unary minus 11. Boom. Okay? What do we get as the force? 5.6 times 10 to the minus 12? Newtons, that by the way is 5.6 pico newtons. We actually have uh, three sig figs, I'm sort of impressed. So what, what, what would it be with three, three, three sig figs? 6.1? So 10 to the minus 12th is pico newtons. What's 10 to the minus 9th is nanonewtons, 10 to the minus 6 is micronewtons, 10 to the minus 3rd is millinewtons. I don't know which one's more pleasing. I think piconewtons is one of the better ones, isn't it? 10 to the, 10 to the 6th is meganewtons, 10 to the 3rd is kilonewtons. Huh? Are we all good? Is everybody doing this? Is everybody doing times 10 to the minus? Yeah. Doing E? Yeah, you're not squaring the R. It's R squared. There you go. Yeah, it's always good to work out the bugs, isn't it? Sorry. What? No, I mean, now I know what happened. You took the answer from the last one and then mm -hmm. the equation to it. And that yeah, do it all in one swell foop. Yeah. What? Uh, it's A more keystrokes B. When you square it, it won't, it'll only square the last part and not the whole thing. So it's better to do. All right. Um, two things before we do the next example, boys and girls. Uh, two things. No, wait. One thing. One thing. No, not even anything. No, just one thing. Okay, here's the deal. This formula is exact. This formula is exact if these things are spheres and you're using the center to center distance. Okay, it's also exact if the objects are so far away that they could be considered points. So these two pens, if I've got this pen over here and I take this pen back home, and I look from this pen to that pen, that pen's just a point, right? You know what I'm saying? That geometrically, this thing subtends a very small, solid angle with respect to that one, right? It's essentially a point. Then this thing is exact. Now, as this gets closer and closer and closer, this formula actually, this problem is one you're going to solve in calculus class. And this is not a terribly difficult problem, but it's not trivial, right? The force of gravity between this one is actually we have to integrate all of the forces and add them all up between every particle of this and every particle of that. And that's something that calculus can do, and you can't do it any other way except for maybe with a computer or something like that. Okay? Now let's do the second one. The second example is the force of gravity between a one kilogram mass and the Earth. Okay? Now, if the mass is sitting on the Earth, is R zero? Oh, it's the guy fixing the door. <laughs> 